This is what it takes to get a really good Google expedition. So I'm sure you guys have seen the 360 degree videos now that you can get on YouTube and Facebook where you can actually move your phone and look all the way around. Well, we want to do that but with the deep ocean. So I'm out here just off the coast of Bermuda with a Necton mission who are doing an incredible scientific adventure, diving right down in these phenomenal submersibles. Look at them, these are wicked. But what's really exciting today is that we've got two guys 360 degree filming pros. I'm <laughs> I'm Matt from Virtual, I'm the head of production, and this is our small stereoscopic 360 rig. I'm Casey Sapp, CEO of Virtual in San Diego, California, and this is a massive rig. <laughs> I love it! What's really neat is that the guys are here to make uh, a whole load of stories for Google Expedition that you're going to see in classrooms all over the world. It's really going to revolutionize teaching, and I'm going to show you how they make them. We designed a first of its kind underwater 360 stereo camera system. We're turning uh, Wi-Fi on right now so we can start and stop the cameras all together. 30 Hero 4 blacks producing gigabytes of data every minute. Looks like I'm good, I got 30 cameras. This is it, moment of truth, we've done the prep. Now we've just got to go and get that killer shot. The first time I put a virtual reality headset on, I realized that it was going to change the game for education in the classroom. And from there, we started the company, and we've been going ever since. What do you think? Oh man, it's so amazing. Stuff's behind you as well as in front. <laughs> Google Expeditions, in my opinion, is the first self-contained, affordable package for virtual reality for the classroom. And they've taken all the hard considerations of being able to, to go into a classroom with maybe very little Wi-Fi, create a very quality experience, and take kids all over the world. Some who don't have the ability or the access to, to travel. And it's 3D. Feels like you're like there. you actually feel like you have to duck out the way. Now I'm in it. Now I'm in this whole world. And this inspires, it pushes them, it challenges them. And, and so I've been an advocate from the very beginning. That's that's amazing. Yeah. That is good. Glad you like groundbreaking. It. Shall we begin? Let's begin. Alright, timing it, Greg. Okay, Dad. Yep. Okay, camera's okay. going in the water. 15, 12. Uh, I'm 100 feet away. Uh, yeah, that's cool. He's directly behind you, right to your side. Is he in the middle, Casey? You happy? Yeah, he's in. Cameraman is in the middle. They are rolling. Go ahead and dive. Okay, so when you look at uh, something on, the, on your screen, you're seeing just a two-dimensional representation of the world, right? It doesn't look 3D. But if you've been to the cinema, or if you've tried on a pair of those goggles that uh, Casey was showing me earlier, you see the world in 3D. But how's that work? Because you're still seeing it on a screen. Well, look in front of you and put your finger up like this. I want you to shut one eye and look at your finger. Keep your head still, but switch to the other eye like that. And as you switch, your finger will jump in midair. It will look like that, but you haven't moved your finger. Your finger is still in exactly the same place. The reason why it looks like your finger jumps is because each eye has a slightly different view of the world. And those two different views of the world are sent to your brain, your brain puts them together, and that's how you get three-dimensional vision. You get a sense of depth. Because if you actually look at the, um, the screen of your Samsung or whatever you're using, you can actually see it. it's kind of a strip on the top and a strip at the bottom. But that's just kind of like for you to see. What actually happens is the software sends one of those sections to that eye and the equivalent section to the other eye. So that's it right. knows kind of where you're looking. That's right, absolutely. Yeah, and you need to have about two and a half inches between these two lenses so it mimics the distance between your eyes. Without that separation, you don't get a 3D effect. So that could be a pretty sweet shot. You've got the 360 rig right in the middle between the two uh, subs. So hopefully what you'll be able to see at one point is both the subs on either side, which would be amazing in that, That's right, in yeah. that view where you'll be able to be like, one sub, oh, the other sub. It couldn't be better. 
think our scuba diver is testing the limits. We said 40 meters and it should be good down to 40 meters. I'm a little nervous, yeah, actually. I'd be more comfortable around 10 meters max. So. 10 to 40, that's a three atmospheres difference in pressure. That's a it big is, one. It is indeed, it is indeed. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we get all the cameras back in one piece. Graham has just uh, surfaced again with that massive rig of 30 GoPros. Graham's an all-star. That was great. You got all the different angles and stuff. That was fantastic. Funny shot. How many times do you get to get in the water with like two million quid's worth of uh, kit? That was awesome. At that last moment, uh, both of them were going down at once and they just kind of went into the abyss and disappeared. And Graham was following him, and uh, he was right. like, go up! <laughs> I'm like, I'm good! <laughs> that is gonna make an amazing Google expedition. Wow, what a day. The guys are super happy with that. So the subs are off down in the deep ocean right now, doing the XL Catlin deep ocean survey for the next admission. The boys are in there right now, Casey and Matt. They're plugging in all those GoPros. They're getting all that footage. They're starting the stitch. If you've come here because you want to know how Google Expeditions works, or indeed because you've been in class and looking at our stuff, that is how it's made. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.